Hello beautiful person, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chu and today we're going to be making a beat for Travis Scott, one inspired by his project Huncho Jack, Jack Huncho, which he made in collaboration with Quavo. I always say that this project is criminally underrated, so it's my genuine pleasure to be paying homage while teaching my boys how to make bangers. There are three main aspects we'll be focusing on today that will help you learn how to create Huncho Jack inspired beats. First, we'll be covering sampling. Many of the songs on this album use a sample, which really gives it that old school mixtape vibe, but with a modern trap take on it. We'll cover the best ways to find samples. Then we'll go over how to chop them up so that you can use them to create trap bangers. Next, we'll cover drum programming. Now, this is a big one as this album had input from some of the hardest drum programmers in the game. From Murder Beats to Buddha Bless, it seems like only the top tier programmers were allowed to lay hands on this project. And lastly, we'll cover mixing. Because as I always say, nothing else about your beat is going to matter if it sounds like ass coming out of the speakers. So one, sampling, two, drum programming, three, mixing. Got it? Okay, good. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment below to be featured in the next video. Check out my free 14 drum kit linked in the description below. It's going to be a key factor in the drum programming section and will allow you to follow along. And please drop a like on this video as it greatly helps my channel against the YouTube algorithm. And as you do, I wish you a wonderful learning experience. God bless you and enjoy. So first we've got sampling. So let's start off with my sampling research method. Whenever I start working on a sampled beat in which I'm looking to emulate a vibe from someone else, I start with a bit of research. Pretty much the only thing I learned from being an Ivy League student is that studying and preparation ahead of time can actually go a long way towards improving your performance in a given task. I began my research by listening to Honcho Jack a few times all the way through to see which beats with samples I wanted to emulate. A few definitely stood out to me, especially Modern Slavery with its obvious Otis Redding sample, but ultimately I decided to go with the album's namesake song, Honcho Jack. That was before realizing that Illmind totally made the sample. Man, shout out Illmind. I didn't even know that. So after confronting and coming to terms with the fact that the joke was totally on me, I picked my backup option, How You Feel, and kept my fingers crossed that it wasn't another song that used a loop that sounded like a sample. I searched How You Feel on Who Sampled and was relieved to see that the joke might not be on me after all, as this track sampled a song called The Word 2 by a 1970s J-pop artist named Shigeo Sakito. Once I found this out, I knew that I could use the information about this song to find a similar vibe on Tracklib because they have a godly search function that allows you to find exactly what you're looking for when it comes to locating samples. It's like they're clairvoyant or something. With the help of Google and a bit of detective work on Toombat, I was able to find a bunch of cool data about this song that I'd be able to plug right into the parameters of Tracklib's search function. So off to Tracklib I went, only to find out once more that the joke actually still was on me. You see, Tracklib actually is psychic. As soon as I logged in, I saw this Far East Bangers collection that they put together. So this is interesting because Tracklib regularly curates digital crates based on vibes, artists, moods, and many other factors. So if you're literally just stuck, these crates can be a huge source of inspiration. It's actually kind of funny that I knew about this, but didn't think to check if they had a vibe specific crate before doing all this nerd work. But if you want to see in detail how powerful their all tracks search function is, check out some of these videos here where I demonstrate it and my research techniques. This is one of the many reasons I love Tracklib. There's just so many ways to catch a vibe and get inspired. They are the world's first and only online record store. They have over 100,000 pre-cleared songs for you to start sampling right now, including pieces from artists like Isaac Hayes, The Meditations, and Louis Armstrong. This means you can log into Tracklib and find a real sample to work with in minutes, which is insanely dope. Using these search parameters, I was able to filter for songs that were exactly the vibe I was looking for. Later when I release or place this beat, I or the artist can go one step further and clear the sample for only $50. Actually, since 90% of Tracklib samples are in the C category, they can be cleared for just $50 each and will allow for 2-20% to revenue share. This is a really convenient way to find and clear samples, especially when you compare it to the traditional method of paying anywhere from $5,000 to $200,000, drafting many contracts, and going through countless lawyers over an excruciatingly long period of time. From experience, I know how difficult this can be. This is why I know that Tracklib can save any musician from tons of stress and hassle. Tracklib has given me a special link where you can access their entire platform for 30 days at no cost. And on top of that, they threw in 15 track download tokens so you can get to crate digging right away. So head to the link in my description and start sampling the right way. Huge thank you to the wonderful people over at Tracklib for sponsoring this video and making this dope content possible. 
Okay, so now we can get into arranging the sample. After some digging, I found a dope sample called Uragi Usagi by an artist named Miyuki Mori. Just to be sure it fit the trap concept I had in mind, I used Tracklib's Beat Looper to test out some patterns. I told you man, Tracklib has all sorts of amazing functions built in. After downloading the sample, I got to work cutting out sections that I wanted to use in my beat. My research actually did end up coming back to help a bit because I made a note that the sampling style was a sped up plug and play in the tempo of 140 beats per minute. So my process here was to open the sample in Edison by right clicking its waveform in the channel settings. Next, I'd find a section that looped and that I could count out for four to eight bars. This is a pretty common plug and play sampling strategy amongst professional producers and it seems like this is exactly what past beats did on how you feel. Then I would drag that section into the playlist. I repeated this until I had enough parts to write my own melodic story, if you will, using these sample chops. Next I came to each of the samples so that I could stretch them and fit them to my tempo of 140 beats per minute. So here's how you can do that. First remember that each section has to loop perfectly or else this is not going to work. You know a sample is looping because when it starts over, it sounds natural instead of disjointed. So here's an example of a chop from this sample that loops perfectly. And here's an example of a sample chop that does not loop perfectly. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense to you now. And don't worry about having your loops be absolutely precise when you're pulling them from Edison. It's not worth the time to get them that perfect. Just make sure that it's close enough that it won't sound gross to the listener when they hear it on playback. Okay, so once you're sure that your sample chops loop, the next step is to time stretch. There are many ways to do this in FL Studio. I like to do it by opening the sample's channel settings and then going to this time knob here. Then I right click it and select whatever time stretching or shrinking option that I would like. I counted out each chop as a four bar section in my head. And I also noticed that the chops were all shorter than four bars in this 140 beats per minute grid. Therefore, I knew that the four bar stretch option would be perfect for the stretched plug and play style that I was trying to emulate from how you feel. So that's what I did for each chop and it ended up working out pretty nicely. After this, I arranged the chops into my melodic story. Here's what I came up with. Now let's talk about effects on the sample. For the effects, first I ended up pitching everything down three semitones. Later when I got started on the drums, I realized that the 808 didn't sound good rooted at this key, so I did end up pitching it down another three semitones, making that six semitones in total, or half an octave. Other than pitching, I bust the sample to this track that had a gross beat with these sidechain settings. I did this so that the volume of the sample would sort of 
dip in and out on tempo. Since there was some human error in the timing of the sample, which I can assume happened because it was played naturally, I did this to help it sound just a bit more on grid. This trick is subtle, but it can really give your melody some bounce. Then on the same melody bus, I added the following effects. I added this EQ to cut out some unneeded high and low frequencies. I added a retro color with these settings and a fruity chorus with these settings. And then I added another retro color with pretty similar settings to the first. Then going back to the sample track itself, I came back and added this EQ and then a reverb with these settings to give it a little bit more width in the stereo. All right, now we can get to my favorite part. Let's talk about drum programming. In my opinion, drum bounce was the key to the entire Huncho Jack project. The melodies were amazing and Trav and Quavo definitely did their things with the bars. But man, these producers went nuts with the patterns. They were really ahead of their time with this type of programming. I took a lot of inspiration for this drum pattern from Huncho Jack, which is actually my favorite song on the whole project. Fun fact, the drum bounce that Murder Beats created on Huncho Jack is the same way I build out my drum patterns 90% of the time when I'm making a standard trap beat. It's just that good to me. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual drum patterns. So to start, I laid down this clap. Then I grabbed the Bran hi-hat, which is my favorite one from the 14 drum kit, and I used this MIDI pattern for my boy Throw Tobin's MIDI kit, Long Live. Then I laid down this open hat. Then I laid down this accent snare. And then another. And then I laid down a second open hat. I also use this Vox to signal the start of each eight bar section. Then I got to work on my 808 pattern, which is when I realized that I had to pitch the melody down more to get the sub to sound clear. Here's how my main 808 pattern came out. Then I laid down this kick pattern. I also used a reverse kick because why not? You just do this by dragging out your kick sample into the playlist, which creates a new sample separate from the kick that you've programmed. Then you just go to the sample settings and click reverse. Then you can drag it to just before the pattern starts each time with a kick. I found that it also helps to pitch down the reverse kick just a bit. Shout out to TriFreeze for getting me back on this wave. By the way, his tutorials are awesome. You should definitely check him out. I also made this sub bass pattern to use in the intro and for breakdowns on the beat structuring. Here's what I made with that. So I did want to talk really quickly about the 808 pattern variations I made to match the melodies on the sample. It's something I wanted to make note of because I actually did make these variations to match the way the melody changes throughout the beat. The main pattern I made would have worked for the entire beat because I did follow the root note, but I did want my 808 to be a bit more melodic in certain areas. So I made a few patterns that reflected this desire. Here's the first variation I made. And then here's the other one.
Okay, so now let's talk about mixing. In terms of overall mixing, I just followed my basic method, which you can learn in this video here. But there are a few pretty cool things that I did in this particular mix that I want to share with you. Now, the first is 808 parallel compression. This is a trick that I use to make my 808 sound louder without having them obliterate the mix. I basically do this by creating a send for the 808 by routing it to a new track. Then I put some kind of distortion on the send and use EQs and compressors to make sure that I'm only accentuating the mid range frequencies of the 808, which are the ones that make it seem way louder and more present. I did this here by using Neutron 4, which allowed me to EQ and distort within the same console. Then I used the Fruity Wave Shaper for some compression and loudness. If you want a full guide on how to perform this technique with stock FL Studio plugins, check out this video here that I made earlier this year where I covered this trick in way more detail. Okay, now let's talk about the master chain, which is the other really cool thing I want to talk about for this beat. So my engineering mentor, Chris, has worked with like like every cool artist that you can think of. Beyonce, Travis Scott, Toby, Lil Wayne, and like a bunch of other ones. And he regularly soundtracks TV shows and movies. So when he's telling me something, I give it legitimate credence. When I was taking his in-person course earlier this year, he showed the class this simple EQ trick that will make your trap beats sound better to artists who are listening to them. I'll show it to you now and then give you the explanation he gave us. So here it is. He basically said that this EQ will accentuate the frequencies that r and and trap artists like the most in instrumentals. He did go on to say that this isn't a good technique to use in properly mixed and mastered tracks, but if your goal is to get noticed by rappers and singers, this could be a nice EQ for the MP3s that you play in your beat store because it will make the most interesting frequencies the most noticeable on any speaker. One more thing that I added on the master was this soft clipper. Now, it doesn't actually matter what kind of soft clipper or limiter you use on the master, it just matters that you you use one. Soft clippers and brick wall limiters are the sound of modern music. If you want your beats to be comparable in terms of punch and loudness, you're going to need to use one. If you want to learn how to limit and clip your beats using stock FL Studio plugins, check out this video here. So in conclusion, Huncho Jack is one of the most influential projects on my production. The entire album is on my workout playlist. Besides basically everything Wonder Girl has ever made, this project has the biggest impact on how I produce trap beats. I hope that I was able to inspire you to try your hand at emulating this type of production. Be sure to drop a like on this video and share it with a friend who's a Honcho Jack fan. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. If you don't, your FL Studio will freeze the next time you use it, you'll spill coffee all over your MIDI keyboard, and your crush will call your next beat trash. Wait, really? I mean, probably not, <laughs> but seriously, why chance it? Peace. I could really kill someone if I wanted to. Hey, yo! But what we I? won't. We won't. Hey. Okay. Hey, we won't. Okay. All right. But we could.